Some people in the fragrance community seem to think that just by spraying on a really nice fragrance, you can make yourself really attractive to women. That's actually rather unfair, patronising and condescending towards women. In order to make a woman like you, what's got to happen is a lot more complicated than that. You've got to have big muscly arms, a fast shiny car and a big fat bank balance. Hello everyone, so today's video is going to be on my top 5 fragrances from the House of Creed. Previously I've done two designer houses, I've done Chanel and Dior top 5s, so I thought it was time to do a niche house and of course I'm going to start with the most well known probably in the fragrance community which is of course the French house of Creed, reputedly founded way back in 1760 and handed down from father to son. So, a really popular niche fragrance house, probably the entry level niche house for a lot of people who usually like to design a fragrances. If you want to get something accessible, easy to wear, fresh smelling, Creed has got your back. Let's see which five I think are the best. I've got about seven bottles of Creed fragrances and numerous decants and samples too. I'm not going to have a problem if I've just got a decant or sample of putting that in the top five if I think it's better than bottles. But let's see what I picked. So let's find out. Number five then. Hmm. I've picked my five. Some of the orders actually going to be picked on the spot. I'm going to go at number five with Creed Aventus. Okay, so Creed Aventus is the most famous one. We've all heard of that one, probably. But you might be new to this whole game, so maybe you haven't. Just to give you a brief description then, it's a very bright, sparkling opening. It's got pineapple, bergamot, French apple. There's a bit of fruitiness with the black currant in there and a, a nice smoky, woody uh, element in the base with patchouli and birchwood. Very, very accessible and wearable and lovely fresh scent, but with a little bit more guts and depth in it than a lot of fresh scents and that's what makes it a bit of a great all-rounder with a very masculine aura about it and kind of smells like success. Uh, I really like this one, it was the first Creed fragrance I bought, I got a 30ml, I don't recommend that, it's not great value but I was young and it, it, it is a very very nice likeable fragrance. It's slightly a victim of its own success, it's becoming very well known even amongst people who are not heavily into fragrances and perhaps like the first choice of nouveau riche people looking to splash a bit of cash on a fragrance so there's something about this one come just becoming a little bit obvious maybe that puts me off but it shouldn't really that's not that fragrance's fault it's got numerous imitators i just got a bottle of uh, club de nuit intense man this week i'll explain why soon i don't think that's the best clone but just wanted to have one uh, loads of clones and copies of this one it is a really really nice fragrance great all-rounder and uh, they they really captured something for this to have become the big hype train that it is did happen for a reason and uh, I'm definitely a fan of Creed Aventus but it's not one of my uh, absolute top two or three favourites but it is, yes definitely, it would be a bit fake not to put it in the top five. So that's Creed Aventus. Now, number four, this won't be in many people's lists. There are, you know, I've, I've tried all the main ones. By the way, this list is not going to include the exclusives lines, it's just the kind of main ones that come in these kind of bottles. Uh, and the ones that I've left out it is for a reason. So things like Silver Mountain Water, I've got a little decant of that one. It's a very nice scent, but it's just nice. It's sort of an 8 out of 10. It's pleasant, but it doesn't really have a wow factor for me. Uh, similarly, Millicene Imperial, quite like that one, but doesn't really grab me and, and uh, grab me by the nostrils and excite me. And there, there are a few from their line that do. So let's move on. Number four, then, I'm going to go with... Royal Mayfair. So originally there was something called Royal Windsor way back from Creed and this is the kind of reissue of it called Royal Mayfair. It's to do with the Duke of Windsor way back in the 30s or something. Notes in this one, you've got some gin, eucalyptus, we've got rose and we've got a piney feel. It's got a quite medicinal feel about it. Um, Claire from the Smurfy Gully Channel always says it smells like creosote that people used to paint their fences and well yeah it's got some of these kind of not notes that you would expect in a fragrance but I, when I first smelled this one I didn't like it and you might be the same if that's happened to you revisit this one as time develops this one really it's grown on me and eventually I had to get a bottle what I really like about this one is that it's got a niche quality about it it's got a little bit of a retro feel there's a certain sort of spring freshness about that gin note and the rose and there's a, this kind of interesting, slightly old-fashioned, but somehow not dated medicinal note in there. Uh, for a lot of people, they're going to be put off this one. It, but the thing is with me, 
with Creed fragrances, I want the ones that smell more niche. And things like Millicene Imperial, Original Vetiver, then Original Santal also. They're very nice, but they smell like designer fragrances. They're not that exciting, but they are likeable. But this one, to me, it's likeable. And it's also got a real complexity and depth to it. It's got a little bit of a retro feel and something that really tugs on my uh, heartstrings and captures my imagination. So I really like the old feel with that one, but it's it's got a certain freshness and something a little bit regal about it. It's linked to the royal family of England and all that kind of stuff. It does have a slightly regal, aristocratic feel. Very nice, and there's a certain freshness that comes from that rose and the gin with the pininess. Very, very attractive fragrance. It's really grown on me, and uh, definitely an under-the-radar one from Creed Royal Mayfair. So, that's number four. Number three, then. Okay, Royal Oud for me. Number three. I really love Royal Oud. Again, when I first smelled it, it wasn't one of my favourite Creeds. It was a definite pass. Big criticism on this one is it doesn't have very prominent Oud notes. So, the Oud thing in it is not that noticeable. Uh, Olivier Creed, no hold on, Irwin, the younger one, said that he um, they were definitely trying to have a kind of uh, oud fragrance for people who weren't normally that keen on oud, a euro friendly kind of oud. It's got a very nice cedar wood note and a pink pepper with a bit of a bright citrus opening and a kind of woody ashy feel about it. There is something a little bit exotic about this one. I really really like it but it's one at the first sniff that you might think, mm, not sure about that one. It's not as obviously crowd-pleasing as things like Erolfa or Millicene Imperial, but it's got depth and it's got a real niche quality. So I find this one sort of a great spring, fall scent, maybe even winter too, if you really like nice, complex, yet likeable woody notes mixed in with a, a certain sort of pink pepper, just a hint of sweetness and a, a touch of exoticism. I think this is a really, really good, could be a signature scent, and Royal Oud doesn't get the love that it deserves, I think. Uh, it's, it's one of their best, actually, from the House of Creed. Moving on, then. It's number two. Well, I've got two huge hitters here. And this is, I'm, I'm literally going to decide this now, so I need a drink for this. I'm drinking Punk IPA again, a Scottish-made American-style IPA. Now, if you've seen my channel before, you might have an idea what my top two might be. And I still can't decide which one I should put at number one. I'm going to go with my heart, not my head. So, that means number two is going to be green Irish tweed. The smell of a walk in the Irish countryside without the terrorist checkpoints or the drunk Irish farmers. Uh, so, green Irish tweed is a very, very fresh scent, but it's not all about citrus freshness. It's a, a kind of green grassy freshness. There's lemon verbena, we've got violet leaf and iris, and a very, very nice sandalwood and ambergris dry down too. It's basically like the rich man's version of cool water. Uh, Davidoff cool water, we've all heard that comparison, and there is a similarity, but this is way, way better in the quality. Super wearable, super versatile, very classy, a very, very timeless scent that was released way back in 1985. And I've really been um, happy every time I've worn it. I, it just can be worn in any situation. It's fresh, it's likeable. Uh, it's it's going to be popular with ladies because it's a fresh, clean kind of scent. There's nothing weird about it. But it has that, just, it just has a little bit of that niche quality. Just It must be the ingredients they use that just stand, sets it a little bit above your designer fresh fragrances and gives it that real air of sophistication. Uh, it's an ar another aristocratic scent, and that's, I like, think, what you want when you buy into that whole Creed thing. I know not everyone likes their um, stuff about the history of the house and the supposed links with royalty, but you want to buy into that a little bit. They're expensive fragrances, and this does make you feel a bit aristocratic. Very fresh, very clean, great springtime scent, but you can wear it all year round. Signature scent worthy, good performance for me. Uh, and lasts long, projects well. So I love Green Irish Tweed. If you know much about my channel, you're probably going to know what the number one is going to be. Some say it's been discontinued. It might be discontinued now they're changing the bottle sizes. Haven't seen the new sizes advertising this one in the line, so hope not, but it might be. Bois de Portugal, 1987. Reputedly, it was worn by Frank Sinatra. Uh, a much more rich and spicy scent than a lot of creeds, which, of course, they're known for fresh scents. So this Bois de Portugal has a lovely bergamot, lavender, sandalwood combination, vetiver, and the usual creed ambergris. Uh, it reminds some people that I've read on Base Notes, and me too, when come to think of it, of Chanel Pomachore in its old formulation, which I have a, a sample of, but kind of made into a richer, 
deeper version of some of those same notes, even though they're not really classified as the same kind of fragrance. A really nice green, spicy, woody fragrance that smells like a sort of an old, dusty old library or something in a really good way. It does lean towards the more mature gentleman. Um, it's something that frag heads will enjoy more than the average person. I was told that somebody did say that I smelt like their grandma's bathroom when I wore it, but I took that as a compliment. It projects really well. It's classy, it's sophisticated, it has real niche quality and a certain retro feel. Lovely um, label there. So for me, Bois de Portugal is my personal number one. Recommendability wise, and that's why I am Denard, probably Green Irish Tweed, if you're looking for a first niche purchase other than Aventus. Green Irish Tweed would be a safer bet. Anyway, I did buy that before I got Bois de Portugal. They're all excellent. Ones that I left out, I still like them. There's hardly anything I dislike from Creed. It's a brilliant house. All the ones in this list nearly were 10 out of 10s or 9 out of 10s. But for me, the number one Creed is Bois de Portugal. That's a personal choice. Recommendability-wise, you might probably go with Green Irish Tweed. Anything else in this list is really good. And there's hardly anything in that line that I don't like. Their prices are very high, I know. You can get other stuff out there that's cheaper that might give you just as so much fun. I'm not going to comment too much on that. Let me know what you think about Creed's prices, Creed's fragrances, and which your favourite ones are. Any good clones that you know, of course there's billions of them. Which ones do you like best? Club Denouis, Intense Man. Any good? I personally don't think it's a brilliant copy. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time in the next video. And remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project.